I am fighting every day for the great people of this country. Therefore, in order to fulfill my solemn duty to protect America and its citizens, the United States will withdraw from the Paris Climate Accord Thank you. Well, there you have it. Now, it takes one year for the notice provision to work its way through, but it is a done deal. And de facto, of course, America has been out for several years. Joining us now to talk about this moment is our friend from ClimateDepot.com, Mark Morano. Mark, I hope you get a signed copy of the official <laughs> notice yourself. I'm sure you would put it on a plaque on the wall behind you. Yes, I would. I mean, this is this is probably the greatest uh, achievement, both symbolic and factual, of the Trump administration and, and international and domestic policy. It's a great one because it combines both international policy and domestic policy. It says we're not going to be beholden to the international uh, whims of the United Nations regulations, and we're not going to affect U.S. policy by climate insanity. So. This is just Donald Trump being pure Donald Trump. Donald Trump, a nationalist, America first figure. Um, and this is why you know his base loves him. This is why the media hates him. Uh, this is probably the most offensive thing that President Trump has done, uh, according to the mainstream media and to the uh, you know liberals in America. You, he could not do anything more damaging. And, and he's following up on his pledge from June, uh, was it 2017, uh, to get us out this letter yesterday, uh, Secretary of State Pompeo, it's following up, it's a complex process, still takes another year before we're formally out, before the United States is formally out. But this is a moment where Donald Trump shines uh, to his supporters and is literally the devil to his detractors. Yeah, you know, the timing is delicious. I think the, the expiry of the one year notice provision is pretty much spot on. Uh, the day of uh, next year's presidential election, of course, before yes. the, the next president is inaugurated. So Donald Trump will still be president. It's just great. Um, <clears throat> you and I have talked about uh, the importance of the climate file, the environment file. Uh, we were huge fans of Donald Trump's first EPA boss. And when he was drummed out by the Washington deep state, we were both worried that that was the end of Trump's uh, war on junk science and war on climate globalism. Here we are three years into the term. America is now a net exporter of energy, the world's largest producer of energy. Fracking is full tilt ahead. LNG is full tilt ahead. Oil production uh, in Texas, in the Bakken is at the highest ever, I think. Um, you see the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. You see offshore drilling in the Gulf. I think that you and I were nervous a few years ago, but looking back on the first three years, I think he's pretty much done everything he said he would do. Am I right? Yeah, he really has. Uh, I mean, on environment and energy policy, uh, it is just phenomenal. Uh, we are having the American energy renaissance under President Trump. Now, the one dark spot is coal. And the problem is, you know, Murray Energy just declared bankruptcy last week. The problem is coal has two problems. A, there was a war on coal for eight years under President Obama that just you know, destroyed, slaughtered. And secondly, fracking of natural gas has become so efficient, so abundant, so um, uh, advanced that coal is really the real enemy of coal at this point is the new technology. Or I shouldn't say new technology of fracking, but the booming fracking industry. And so that's what's happening in places like uh, you know, Pennsylvania and other states. So that's the one area where I don't know how successful President Trump can be, but it has been an energy boom in the United States. Mm -hmm. And so what happens now is that a referendum next year, 2020, as we head into the U.S. presidential election, it is going to be a referendum on the Green New Deal and energy policy. Mm -hmm. We are literally faced with a stark choice, President Trump, to continue this policy of the American Renaissance or it's going to be a complete and a, one, and a 180 degree turn back the other way. We are talking every Democratic presidential candidate is pledging to ban 
fracking. Not only fracking, but plastic straws and car and uh, the uh, uh, automobiles and have rotating fleets of electric vehicles. We have candidates that are talking about banning every conceivable form of energy except solar and wind, which they think is going to magically replace it. So as good as President Trump is, th he's got to up his game in 2020 because he's got to run on this. And I think this is this is one reason why President Trump is leading in all of these key states that he won last time that are, you know, the Rust Belt states that re rely on American energy. Uh, it's because of these policies. But, you know, there's still a lot of other states, New York, California, that are going to be out voting against him in this. So this is it's a jump ball, I think, for next year, whether we continue these policies, go back in the or go back in the Paris Agreement and start banning American energy. All those numbers you just mentioned, Ezra, would reverse in the next four years if a Democrat's elected. That's an excerpt from The Ezra Levant Show, which is a show I do every day. I do a monologue, interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. But you've got to subscribe to it, which you can do at premium.rebelnews.com.